The key to resolving a paradox is good experimental data, and by 1890 the experimentalist had many accurate measurements of black body radiation. This allowed the theorists to test various ideas. Max Planck goes down as the man who had the idea that worked. First, he noticed that the classical energy per mode did not depend on the frequency. It's simply kT. Since the number of modes increases with frequency, you get infinite energies in the cavity. What Max Planck needed was a way to reduce the energy per mode as the frequency increased. The idea that worked was that energy comes in energy values of a basic unit and depends on frequency. In 1898, Planck did not know that this was one of the great ideas of all time. It could have just been a lucky guess. His idea was, energy comes in units of hf, where f is the frequency and h is a new constant which would become famous as Planck's constant. The average energy in each mode is calculated with the usual method of weighting each energy by the Boltzmann's weight e to the minus e over kt, and dividing by the partition function. Thus, we get this formula. The formula looks formidable, but it's actually just the ratio of two geometric series. You can sum it with your high school math skills, or see the attached documentation for a step-by-step -step explanation. Either way, you get this result. The average energy for a mode is modified from the classical value of kT by a factor of 1 over e to the hf over kT minus 1. This has no effect at low frequencies, but it reduces the average energy for high frequencies. Just what Planck wanted. Remember the formula for the number of modes as a function of frequency. Now I'll just multiply by the new formula for the average energy per mode, and you get a very famous result. This equation earned Planck a Nobel Prize and a place in history. It's called Planck's equation, and was the first equation to use Planck's constant, h. When Max Planck first derived the equation in 1899, he found it would fit the experimental data if the constant h was adjusted to be 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 34 newton meters squared. Little did he know that this constant would show up time and time again in explanations of many other phenomena. Unlike Boltzmann's constant, no theory to date has been able to explain its value. People are starting to call it a fundamental constant. Back in 1900, there were no computers and statistics software. To show that the equation worked, physicists just plotted their experimental data with the equation's predictions. Planck's equation fit the experimental data better than any other proposal. It solved the ultraviolet catastrophe at high frequencies and merged with the classical theory at low frequencies. Planck's theory was considered a major accomplishment. It would take many years before it was realized to be a major breakthrough. We'll get to that story soon, but first we're going to insert a video on other ways of deriving Planck's equation. I think you'll find it fascinating.